Welcome back to Fast Market here on the Schwab Network. It's time for our cash tag segment. For that, let's bring in Landon Swan. He's a co-founder at Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Landon. Thank you, Tom. It's good to be here. All right, so we're talking Crocs. Uh, this stock's have been underperforming, down about 4% on the year. I mean, you know, I, I'm trying to think back to when we talked about this with you guys last time. It seemed like Crocs was hitting an all-time high. Everybody was buying them. They had partnerships with famous people. Uh, but it seems like this is one of those unloved stocks. Do you have the data that kind of supports the weakness that we've seen here? We do. In fact, uh, last quarter we were bearish going into earnings. I think they, they closed right before earnings at 88, got down as low as 74. Since then, um, on that earnings report, since then they've they've uh, rallied back to about 104. I know they're down on the year, but the last few, uh, few months has been uh, pretty strong for Crocs. Uh, but our data has not changed. We're still bearish. So this is a bit of a divergence for us. This is the market seeing something that we don't see. We're still bearish as far as the data goes. Um, and really what we're seeing is, you know, they – if you look, if you just look at their own report, uh, the revenue was up six percent year over year last quarter, but their number of shoes sold were down four percent. Mm -hmm. So they're hitting uh, higher prices, but less customers. And you know their new acquisition, Hey Dudes, was was doing even worse. They're at eleven percent less on a year over year basis. And this is a company that was sort of the the first mover in the ugly but comfortable shoes. Um, and it, you know, we're seeing a lot of comfort focused brands on the rise right now. Uh, the least of which is not uh, Decker's Outdoors. I mean, they are doing really well. Decker's is with their Ugg boots, uh, their Hoka running shoes. Um, they Now, their stock is up almost 2x on a year-over-year -year basis. And they're kind of at the top of our list as far as where we see uh, the, the holiday shopping going. So Crocs is really falling behind a lot of its competitors. Um, when you look at you know just change in visits here, this is web visits on a year-over-year -year basis. You can see uh, on cloud running up top there, Decker's Outdoors. Uh, Skechers and Nike kind of hanging in, and Crocs is the only one that's really negative on this chart. So they're getting less visitors coming to their website. And even when you look at happiness, they're the lowest among these five on happiness. I mean, Skechers is at the top um, and followed by OnCloud, Nike, Deckers, and Crocs is at 67%. So uh, both on a web visits basis, uh, mentions also, and then happiness as well. We're seeing um, negativity across the board for Crocs. They are dead last when it comes to you know comfortable shoes, um, whether whether or not you want to put them in the same category as Nike or not, we can we can argue there because they're kind of a you know they're on their own a little bit. But when it comes to comfort, people are showing their preference and not only how they talk about them online, but where they're spending their money online. So um, you know, Crocs is definitely the the worst of the the shoemakers in our opinion going into this holiday season, and we're seeing it in the in the social mention data, the web data, and the happiness data. Landon, the, you know. This is an interesting turn of events because you guys have liked Crocs for quite a long time. Now, you may have gone uh, negative lately, but you guys were big fans of Crocs early in their life. And they've made this acquisition of Hey Dude and uh, you know, other countries. I know your data do doesn't cover those. But what do you think the major problem is here? Is this really just a fad maybe that's running out of gas on the upside here. I've been very um, open that I don't really like Crocs, <laughs> but I like money, so I like trading. I'll trade a good stock if it's a good trade. My children like Crocs. Generation Z seems to love Crocs. They're everywhere. What seems to be the problem, Landon? You know what, you're right. We've been bullish on Crocs uh, for years. That ended maybe six months ago or something like that. But the, the data was always very, very good on it. The summer data was always, it was very cyclical. and It was higher summers year after year. Um, you know, I, I wish Andy was on today. He's He's been really famous for this one. I mean, he literally wore Crocs in a limo to go close a really big deal. And he gets on stage in Crocs sometimes to make the point. Uh, but, you know, he agrees as well. You got to follow the data now. And everything is showing us that, you know, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say fad because it did last several years, um, but I will say that the competitors have come for them and people are showing that they really like comfortable shoes. And I think that's why Crocs did so well. It was a little bit of a, you know, a quirky, a quirky statement, I guess, when you wore them, but they were very comfortable. But now you've got Ugg boots, you've got Hoka running shoes, you got on cloud, and they're all focused on making very, very comfortable shoes. And that's what Crocs was sort of known for to the person who bought them. To everyone else, it was kind of a weird shoe that you wore, but they were very comfortable. 
So I think it's a matter of competition. Uh, they've also talked about inefficiencies in their distribution channel, uh, both internally and with their with their acquisition of Hey Dude. So there's some stuff on the inside. But when it comes to the consumer, I think it really boils down to uh, just kind of running out of steam on the fad angle. Again, I, I, I hesitate to say that, but um, it is there is an element to that. But then more importantly, competition being very, very competent, coming for them and just taking away their customers. Yeah, uh, Landon, I, I was going to hit on that because I believe these are a fad. And then, you know, you get some, uh, you know, famous singer that gets his own, you know, croc brand or something like that offshoot. That drives some interest. But like I was buying him for my kid 15, 16 years ago when he was little. Then he didn't like him anymore. Then he liked him again a couple of years ago. Now he doesn't like him. So this is a fad type product. Is that the problem that you see moving forward? especially after buying that Hey Dude brand for two billion bucks. Uh, I just think this is one of those uh, classic, you know, a fad that does well. You guys had the data to back that up a couple of years ago, but now it's just out of favor. And maybe it does come back in six months or a year, but it's a fad. It, it could be. And you know what, you know what I think it might be? It might be age dependent on the buyer, right? Like my my uh, little girl, when she was five, Crocs were awesome. And, and still my son, when he was nine or 10, Crocs are awesome. Now the 12 year old's like, eh, they're not cool anymore, dad, right? So I think it just depends on uh, which, which age group you're talking about for the kids. And then for the adults, they may get into a little bit more of the fad territory there, uh, absolutely. But uh, in the end, again, it's comfort, it's all about comfort. And there's so many competitors that are focusing on that. I think that on cloud running uh, really opened our eyes data wise to what that can do for a, a brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, their shoes don't last as long. I don't have any evidence on that, but just, you know, it's anecdotal. I see people trading them in all the time, but when you first put them on, you know, it's like stepping on a cloud and, and that feeling I think really resonates with customers. They, they would trade durability in if they got comfort back and Crocs are extremely durable. They're, they're also comfortable, but they just don't look as good as the others. So, uh, yeah, our holiday winners definitely Decker's Outdoors in this space uh, with Crocs uh, coming up the rear for sure. Yeah, uh, and maybe getting that bounce as everything's been risk on over the last six weeks, maybe contributing to some of the beatdown that that stock's been under, uh, but still negative on the year. All right, great stuff, great data as always, Landon. Thank you, guys. All right, that's Landon Swan, co-founder at Likefolio, breaking down the uber negative uh, uh, you know, sentiment here, Kevin, on this stock. It's right bumping right up against its 200-day moving average, but applied volatility relatively low on this one. Yeah, exactly, Tom. What I did for this the, for this stock is keep it very simple. I have very little commitment to this trade. Uh, I probably should have looked at Likefolio's data before I chose this trade because it's a call calendar on the upside now. It's not a very big call calendar. It's paper money. It's a practice trade. It's worth watching. But what I did, Tom, I bought the December 22nd. So just, it's a one week uh, calendar here. I bought the 106 call right in line with the expected move. And then I sold the this week's 